Joining us today in the studio is Knesset member Sharin Haskell, who sat on the Committee for Foreign Affairs to discuss UNRWA and Israel's renewed diplomatic ties with Africa. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. So let's begin by talking a little bit about UNRWA and the United Nations. What kind of impact is the discovery of this tunnel underneath a Gazan school going to have on the future of this agency in Israel? Well, let me tell you a secret. This is nothing new. We've got years and years of documentation where they are hiding under hospitals, uh, uh, weapons and missiles. They in schools, uh, they have entrance to tunnels, uh, everything. And, and even some of their employees are activists in Hamas. So these news are old news. Uh, we've known that before. Um, we discover more and more the extent of that. And I think that what the Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying is it's about time we end the mandate of UNRWA. I mean, look at it from, from, from the, the, the entire world perspective. We have refugees from the entire world, uh, hundreds of millions, some of them. And, and so, and the Palestinians are maybe 10% of that entire population. They're what they call the refugees, that most of them are settled. And what happens today at the UN is that they have their own a agency that got more fund than the agency of the entire world refugee. And if no one has noticed, there's a crisis of refugee with everything that's been happening uh, in Europe, from, from the Middle East, from Africa. I think it's about time that we take uh, uh, back that mandate uh, understanding that most of the Palestinians are already settled, the funds need to go all to the uh, world uh, refugee agencies, and, and from there being distributed to any refugee who come from, from, from anywhere around Will the world. Will any action actually be taken, though, on, on the part of the United Nations in terms of how they deal with the agency after the discovery of this tunnel? Well, there's been a few discussions uh, in uh, the Congress in the United States uh, about the funding of UNRWA. So I'm sure that that gives uh, a good leverage uh, towards that in understanding that some of the UNRWA school, you know, not just that, some of their books are uh, calling for violence, for hatred. And so I think that gives a little bit more leverage with every discovery and every finding that they do that's uh, connected to UNRWA. Now let's turn to West Africa. Netanyahu recently attended the Economic Community of West African uh, States. Now why is Israel so keen on renewing diplomatic ties with some of these nations? Okay, so first of all, most of these nations are extremely interested in Israel because Israel is exporting a few fields that are extremely necessary for these countries. If we look on agriculture and the agricultural technology that we are exporting all around the world, the water technology, security is something that is very much needed there as well. And they come and they learn from Israel. Now, Israel is tired of coming and assisting different countries, uh, cooperating on a lot of bases, and then in a hypocritical step, they're actually voting against us at the UN. I mean, some of these countries that we had ties with, that we've got relation, that we came and assisted and uh, assist uh, to them, they then go and vote against us either at the United Nations Security Council, at uh, 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 UNESCO, and many more committees. And I think that we now understand, and, and the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has understood that for quite a few years now, that the part of the African countries is giving a huge veto to uh, whatever's being decided at the UN. And for uh, building these relationships, we've got to strengthen the ties and make sure that they understand the political aspect of that as well. Now, are there any countries that are hesitant to renew or improve diplomatic ties with Israel that we know of? And, and I'd like to talk about Senegal as well after this, but mm -hmm. what countries are kind of accepting and, and looking forward to engaging with Israel in the future? Wow, there was a list of ministers, of presidents, of, of heads of government that were uh, uh, coming to meet the, the, the prime minister of Israel. Um, many of them have a very good experience with Israel in these cooperation. And once the other countries around see how much benefits and how much assistance Israel can actually give to their country, then they're starting to come and, and, and come closer as well. Um, 
Well, Senegal, you know, voted against Israel in, in the infamous UN Security Council Resolution 2334, yeah. and only now is rewarming ties with Israel. But will the relationship actually ever be the same? And is Senegal going to take Israel more seriously when it comes to the United Nations in the future? Well, I think they're getting more of the message that, you know, if, if you want a friendship, you, it's going to be a real friendship. It means that we're, we're cooperating on certain fields and we'll need your hand as well at the UN. It comes together. You can't just come and, and you know, backstab Israel when it really means something. And that's why Benjamin Netanyahu is also pushing to become an observant country at the African Union as well, uh, to, to, to create that friendship and that relationship a little bit stronger. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Knesset Member Sharin. It's my Haskell. pleasure. Thanks for inviting me.